Um, well, my uh, my background is in is in in performance in theater and stage uh, direction and design. That's where I started. I also studied. Um, media studies, uh, Sussex University, but I've always been interested in how to tell a story and how to engage an audience. Uh, I started there, like uh, how to engage uh, uh, an audience uh, in, thank you, in, in a live experience. But then, uh, um, this is like my background in different productions I directed or collaborated. Uh, but then I moved on uh, to something more focused uh, uh, on marketing. I, I worked for uh, Madrid uh, Complutense University in the marketing uh, department and I have also worked uh, in, a, in an app uh, development uh, company, technology company in Madrid, in which we researched about second screens and how uh, people uh, used smartphones. And there is where I found like... Um, uh, a crossroad where uh, I, I found there was a point in which my background in telling stories and new technologies and how people engaged with new technologies, there was a, a common ground there uh, that it was worth exploring. So that's where um, when I moved to, to London and then I joined Transmedia Storyteller and I got to know what Transmedia was and what uh, telling a story uh, differently was. Uh, I guess that all of you in here know, but well, transmedia is a way of telling stories differently, uh, multi-platform, so the story, you create a, a, um, a story world that expands and communicates through different platforms and also allows the audience to interact with experience in a more active way. So for the creation of this kind of story worlds, what we do uh, it's just to place the audience at the center of the experience. Our idea is just that uh, we have to wrap the whole experience that we are going to design around the, uh, that person that is going to be our audience so they can uh, start to interact with experience in their normal uh, way. So the experience is a 360 uh, experience in which uh, they just can move and they just can explore and, and enjoy it. So for that, uh, our approach when we design uh, a project is not only to start creating the, the story world, the narrative design, but it has to be uh, combined uh, with also the social media strategy, the content strategy, and the engagement strategy. So the way we approach this is that it's the, the process is different. It's not you first create the story, like traditional in films. You, the, the director directed the film, and then once it's, it's a wrap, it's done. It's not my business anymore. And the, that's a distribution thing. Well, the way we think, it's a little different. Um, we approach the story, but we also approach how that story is going to communicate uh, through social media and how are we going to integrate the, audi the audience uh, through participation right at the start of the creative process. So this way, what we are doing is blending uh, entertainment and marketing. Um, the idea is in this content marketing uh, um, topic that we are going to cover here, um, the, the focus is not only in the content, but also in the marketing. And the whole, the thing is that both are the same. Content is marketing in itself, but it's also entertainment for the, for the audience. It has to, to meet uh, these two characteristics. So it's important to have this in mind when you're approaching the content that you're going to, to develop. So when we, uh, so when we got assigned uh, to create this, um, this experience for Game of Thrones, uh, we had an intellectual property, Game of Thrones, obviously, that it's a, a TV show. So we had this uh, episodic content that you can see. These would be the episodes of the show. And we had the, ch the chance to expand this universe by creating uh, an open story world to explore. So the way we, we envisioned this was that we saw that this might uh, be a little disconnected. So when we started to design this, uh, the first thing uh, we thought is that we should approach it differently. 
the thing that we were going to create was an open story world to explore in which episodes are just another piece of the story. So in that way, obviously, the op episodes are just going to tell us what's going to happen, but when we were deciding how to approach the design, it was interesting to think the episodes are just a little part of the whole universe that we are going to create. So this experience uh, that we created for Game of Thrones in Spain was called 1919 Reinos, that means 19 realms. And this is so um, because Spain is divided in 19 uh, autonomous communities. So are you fans of the series? Yeah. Yay, <laughs> of course you are. So well, in, in the series you know that there are seven families and some territories. So the idea was to bring, to start to bring some ideas from the universe of Game of Thrones and try to place them uh, in, in Spain nowadays. So this experience consisted of uh, different platforms and, and, and was uh, told through these different channels. We had social media, we had a website that, that will hold all the, all the um, the behavior and the behavior uh, of the users. We had the TV uh, in which we broadcasted some programs, special programs about the, about the, about the experience. We had live events. We have a, a web series that was created within the story world, a five episode web series. And we had uh, online events. And if this is working, I'm sure it's going to work, uh, we should have a video. Cool. That it's it's a little summary of the experience. It's in Spanish, so you can practice. De los tejados de Madrid al blog de George R. R. Martin. De las parodias y otras ramificaciones a la primera línea de fuego de las redes sociales y la música como un instrumento más. Canal Plus presenta un nuevo tipo de campaña que ha atrapado la imaginación de sus seguidores. 300 fans que iniciaron la aventura con nosotros y más de 5.000 usuarios que vivieron Juego de Tronos de una forma inolvidable. Lástima que no hayan sabido representarme en todo mi esplendor. Una aventura que continúa creciendo. Salvaje conocido como él. Se busca al nuevo rey de los ándalos y los primeros hombres. Canal Plus presenta 19 reinos. Una experiencia transmedia basada en el universo de Juego de Tronos. Creo que para que una webserie funcione tiene que hablarle a una comunidad de algo muy específico. Con un salvaje entrenador en formato webserie. Una aparición entre más de 300 fans. Una plaza donde recibir pistas. Socios para crecer. Batallas en Twitter. Una programación especial en televisión. Queríamos brindar a los fans, queremos ponerles en el centro para que ellos puedan eh, vivir de primera mano lo que es estar dentro del universo Juego de Tronos. Mi señor. <risa> Está de buen humor. Co-creación por parte de los usuarios. Tasa de interactividad en Facebook superior al 22%. Batman impartiendo justicia. Y además... Los Stark dominando España. Y finalmente, la coronación del nuevo rey. Teníamos un objetivo. Ofrecer a los fans un universo donde desarrollar ese personaje que llevan dentro. Y que lo vivieran de verdad. Llevando a la calle nuestro eslogan de campaña. Y lo hemos conseguido. Si lo vives, es verdad.
You can clap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. Well, this is a, a summary of the whole experience. I'm going to break it down a little bit so we just uh, get into more details in, in all these elements. Um, as you've seen, this experience uh, was based in uh, different um, elements through different platforms, a web series, a social game, a blog, uh, live events, a community, and, and we even, even have some brand integration that I'll, I'll explain later. But what we uh, did when we uh, started to design this is to think what the experience goal was going to be. And uh, for that, we had a beautiful intellectual property to work with that was Game of Thrones. And we found that it was uh, going to be uh, interesting to, to address what the, the premise of Game of Thrones was. So, as you know, Game of Thrones is about doing whatever it takes to get to the throne. So that was exactly what we just dragged from that property and we just put it in, in the experience that we wanted to create. We wanted to give the fans the opportunity to do whatever it takes to get to the throne. For that, uh, everything started with a campaign uh, in Spanish is Si lo vives es verdad, which is translated as perception is reality. So again, it's about placing the fan at the center. Is if you think it's true, and you leave it as if, as if it was true. It's true. You make it real. So that's what we wanted to do, to overlay um, a layer of fiction uh, in, in our audience life, in, in, in the real world, in, in, in Spain nowadays. So uh, you could leave it, whatever you're doing within the experience, as if it, uh, it was true. Uh, we started blending the worlds from, as you see, Game of Thrones and Spain nowadays have nothing to do. So we had to create this middle ground in which we started to blend uh, some characters, some traits from the story world uh, with uh, our present, our current uh, reality. Uh, there was a campaign in which we had some uh, characters from the show, that's Jamie Lannister, it's running uh, uh, through the Gran Vía in Madrid and some other characters, they were just appearing in random places in, in Madrid. And this uh, campaign will end uh, in a spot in which all these characters, uh, this is Kalesi is there, and Jon Snow and Jamie Lannister, they reached this place in which uh, suddenly 300 fans would appear uh, as if they have summoned the characters. For the shooting of this, this spot, uh, 300 real fans came uh, to, to work in the, in the spot, uh, as you see. And while, while we were shooting, it was a very long sh uh, shooting, uh, we presented the first interactive part of our experience of 19 Realms. And that was uh, this character, which uh, will appear to that fan, to that fans, um, in a performance. He will uh, just um, came into the place and just start to tell, uh, to tell them uh, what you're doing is wrong. You should start to, to, to fight for yourself, to choose what family you want to defend. Stop being slaves. You should be ready because the war is really coming. Um, it was a very um, emotional moment because everyone was, uh, the, the, the season was about to start. Everyone wanted Game of Thrones. Um, so they, they were really en encouraged and they really liked to get to know this character who they didn't know who, the, who he was. When he left, they were given a, a parchment in which they discovered that this character uh, was um, someone who was uh, an outlaw and that the, um, the law was looking for. And if they, if they provided some, some clues of who he was or where he was, uh, they will be rewarded. So that, this is where we uh, placed the first interaction. We provided them with, uh, with an email from another character to which you could contact and provide information that you've had. So in this moment, uh, all the participants started to role play within the experience because everyone started to write to that character in their characters like talking like if they were characters in Game of Thrones. 
So once they have helped sharing the videos, sharing the, the pictures that they have taken in, in that sh shooting, they were given uh, 10 coins. And there were different live events uh, prior to the launch of the experience. Um, uh, like the, there was a bookstore that was uh, opened, uh, it was a partner, and um, we had different uh, live touch points in which people uh, were, could go and just find some codes uh, that they could go to the website and exchange for different um, currency within the, within the story world. And we had um, a soldier who was just telling, uh, telling you to enroll. We were just building the idea that the war was coming. And then, uh, if, you, if you know, what, uh, Game of Thrones has uh, 10 episodes per, per, per season. Uh, the way we uh, divided uh, the experience was that the first five episodes, during the first five episodes, it was going to be the preparation time, and for the last five episodes, it, it was going to be war time. So for the first five episodes, for the, for the audience to get prepared, we presented uh, Edwick, that was that character that appeared uh, during the shooting. This Edwick is a wildling, um, and he was... Uh, he was going to work as a coach, uh, and through a web series episode, uh, we had five episodes that were released the day each uh, Game of Thrones episode was released. He would uh, start to explain how the story world was going to work, what the rules were going to, to be, and to, to start to tell uh, the audience that it was needed for them to choose a side and to start getting ready. Along the experience as well, this, this actor, this Edwick, uh, it was not going to be only an online uh, character or only a, um, an actor uh, in a web series. It was uh, a real actor that appeared in real live events. And it was uh, very interesting to see across these three months how it will appear in different uh, places and how uh, the, the, the online presence of this character would expand to real, uh, to real events and how fans would know him and would keep on growing what the, what the experience was. So these were, these were the 19 realms in which uh, the first premise was whenever you enrolled you had to choose what territory you wanted to defend um, and you, want, you had to choose what family you wanted to belong to. Uh, Lannisters, uh, Stark, uh, whatever. As you know, uh, Spain is very uh, territorial in some uh, uh, aspects, so the war was kind of easy in that aspect, because you, cho you chose a territory and the other territories, territories were going to hate you, so the, the conflict was already set up. And we created three different touch points to which uh, uh, audiences could go and interact. And uh, they would be, uh, they, we wanted to, they were online places, but we, want, we wanted to give them like a territorial um, uh, essence. Uh, so the website would be the fort, the, um, where they would get trained for the, for the experience. The Facebook page would be the town square because it was where the community was and where all the conversation was held. And also we had 19 uh, realms in Twitter that would be the battlefield. That's where you just go and fight. Uh, this is so because uh, in this battlefield is where audience would go and just write uh, some comments and these comments would uh, turn into actions that I will explain later. But the battlefield was uh, what we were uh, managing and monitoring just to turn that actions that were taking place on Twitter into, uh, into real behaviors. So there were three types of uh, actions that could take place and that uh, audiences could, could do. As you see, this is uh, what the comments would, would look like in, on Twitter. So if I wanted to change my family, I would just have to go to and, and mention on Twitter 19 Reinos, um, change uh, my loyalty, Lannister, and um, uh, leave Westeros, that was like the hashtag 
across the whole experience. So these are preparation actions. These were taking place uh, at any moment, especially at the beginning of the experience in which uh, the audience could just change their family, change their realm, so they could just um, be, uh, betray their, their territory. Um, and they could just drink potions or just buy objects. This would be, this would be whatever you do, it would, you did into, on Twitter, you could, be, you could see that on the website, in which you had different attributes, like health attributes, defense, um, stamina. As you see, there are many traits that belong to role-playing games, and that Game of Thrones fans, engaged fans, really uh, uh, find very uh, attractive. And here you had like the, the um, inventory in which you could have your objects or whatever you, you, you bought, your family and your territory. And not only we had this experience online, but we also wanted to, to have like a uh, real geocaching experience, like a real treasure hunt. So um, we had uh, in different, uh, different uh, stores across Spain, we placed some codes in, in FNAC stores, well, you know FNAC, right? Uh, in different FNAC stores, we placed uh, different codes that were changed each week. So if you went to that store, you, you could take the code and just redeem it for different currencies or rewards. And not only we, ha we wanted to have this treasure hunt on, uh, in physical places, but also online. So in here, we... Um, um, integrated some of the brands, it, and here is where the brands uh, got integrated in the experience. We had Club Cultura, um, Meditation, that it's a video game uh, portal, and Gigamesh, uh, who is, uh, they are the publishers of Game of Thrones books in Spain. Well, Club Cultura is a, a um, culture portal. And we wanted to, as, as, as we had a territorial essence in our touch points, we wanted to add a language to, um, to, to, their, to their places as well. So Club Cultura was the forest, Mary Station was the brothel, and Gigamesh was the military camp. And every communication that was uh, made in, in each space had a different tone and a different language. Mary Station had even the, had the, the brothel owner that will insult uh, everyone whenever he, the audience would, would like to, in, to, in, to interact with him, and they will give special clues every week. And as you see, we will uh, insert different codes in the different pages, sometimes it was easier. In the brothel, it was almost impossible to find. You got distracted by other things. And finally, in, in each town square, uh, in the town square, we had activities each week. We just suggested puzzles, or we suggested uh, some uh, games uh, to the audience, so they could get better and better within the within the the game. We had different potions, we had different special items that only combined and when you belonged to the, to the correct family, they turned into something else. So it was quite an engaged experience uh, with quite a lot of levels of engagement and a lot to, to explore. Different types of potions, what, what it was going to give you, what, what it costed, and a little uh, spill. So these were preparation actions. Then we had the comeback actions. These are the interesting ones, uh, in which uh, the participants could combat to each other. Again, this would happen on the battlefield. So they could go and say, uh, 19 reinos, attack uh, whoever you want to attack, and vive poniente. Uh, so it, it, would, it would just detract your health points by your, your strength, blah, blah, blah. And the actions that were required were that you could just take was to attack, to seduce, to betray, and to give coin. So again, we're just creating mechanism for conflict within the community. You could compare yourself to other characters, to other players. Uh, you could just uh, uh, do the actions from here. And as you see, well, the Game of Thrones uh, battlefield just become really populated with a lot of uh, attack and betray. 
uh, whatever your behavior was, you could just get some other badges. If you uh, killed a, a king, you became the Kingslayer and so on. So we, we created some different badges within all the, uh, the activities that you could uh, do. And finally, uh, we had the war actions. These actions took place for the last five episodes of Game of Thrones. So for one hour uh, before the show was aired, uh, we uh, allowed the audience to attack other territories. And this was like a strategy game in which audience had to collaborate uh, to just to to know where, where, what do they were going to do if they wanted the actions to take an effect. Um, so, in this case, they would just have to say attack. They would say what realm they were they were going to attack. And whenever this uh, one hour slot was finished, um, then uh, the map would would refresh. As you said, there was six battles because uh, Game of Thrones is five. Uh, it, it's 10 episodes, but they have one week uh, hiatus. So in that uh, hiatus, we had a, a battle as well. And these battles will end up with a coronation. But as you see, uh, after each battle, we will refresh the map in which we will see uh, each territory and which, fa which family would rule each territory. So every week, this will change. Uh, realms will fall, new families will come, and you could see... Uh, how many players there were in each in each uh, territory, who the ruler was, and this was changing a lot every week. And to finish, we again finished with a live event. Everything uh, started with a live event, that performance, and we finished this with a live event in Callao Square. That's like one of the main squares in Madrid. And we invited everyone to a coronation of the new king. That would be the player that won all the wars and survived, that was the most difficult thing, to survive uh, the whole uh, combat. We had some... Did I break it again? Oh, we had some Game of Thrones music, and in there we had Edwick, our character, who was the one to just place the crown in our, in our king. It was a beautiful player from the Balearic Islands, and they were really, really engaged. So, not, not, this was the, the story world that we created, but the, the interesting thing is how all these engaged uh, communities started to generate their own content. For the, uh, the first week, when we presented Edwick and we asked, uh, have you heard about him? We got some MP3s uh, of conversations, like um, players role-playing, uh, pretending to be in a tavern, that they've heard, uh, overheard a conversation talking about Edwick. That was some content that our own community was generating. They generated videos without being asked uh, about them uh, finding the parchment, uh, the Edwig parchment, somewhere in a fortress, lost in the middle of nowhere. Uh, as we had a very um, um, close conversation with all the fans, every week Edwig would attend, uh, we'd come to the town square to just respond some questions and talk. So sometimes we had this, car this player, uh, she was complaining every single week that uh, there was not enough money. I have not enough money, I have not enough money. So what we did, we created a special video for her, addressed to her saying, look, Loli, you're, you're, you're a pain in the ass, okay? We've heard you and we're going to give you some, mon some more money. So we, we had to, to expand uh, the story world with all the inputs from the, from the fans, and obviously we have created a mechanism of, of the game, but it, it obviously had to be flexible, because they were always pushing the limits, and they were only, always finding a way to just go past the, the rules that you've created. They will share all the puzzles, they will share all the, all the badges they will get. And they will create their own weapons, that they will become weapons within the game and something that you could bot. So you could design a weapon and that later on that's something that you will be able to bot along with all the community. And they even created memes. 
something that we have not expected, but it was there was a fun dynamic and it's like uh, people on Twitter attacked some other person and they then deleted the tweet. So people died and they didn't know who was the, attack, the attackant. So they got very angry about that. And the own community was setting the rule, you cannot do this, another part of the community, of course you can. And it was a kind of internal fight and they created memes about that. And we even had an, a new character. We had a Batman, Bruce Wayne, was a part of our community. He talked as Bruce Wayne, as if Bruce Wayne was in Game of Thrones. He even created his own parchments, and he was offering his protection to any player who might need it. So it created some new dynamics we were not really expecting. Uh, they even created more uh, content taking uh, 19 Realms as far as they, they uh, could. This was an assignment and we had some real pictures and we had some Photoshop pictures. So 19 Realms went to the moon. Uh, of course, Batman created his own version of the logo. And in here, this was the European elections. Someone voted for, for us. That was good. And even in, in, in our football match, Atletico Real Madrid, they thought that it was a place for uh, Game of Thrones to be. So they were expanding the limits of the story world that we've created. And finally, uh, as you saw, Edwig was an outlaw and the, the story was going to end that, that Edwig was going to be an outlaw and that was it. Even we were thinking about killing him during the coronation because he was an outlaw and he, was, uh, he had abandoned the, the war and blah, blah, blah. But the thing is that we had uh, kings every week. Well, we had a player one week he, when he got to be the king of his, of his realm. He created this edict in which he said that he was making Edwig a free man in his kingdom. Edict to which the rest of the kings uh, would just uh, decide that they, would, they wanted to do the same. So the 19 kings of that week just made Edwig a free man. That tells you how the community can change the story and how you have to enable them to do that. Obviously we had to, to, to change the ending of the story because it was fair. It was their idea and just, they just made Edwig a free man. Uh, these are some of the stats, you've seen them in the video, but as you see, we had a very engaged community. Uh, the days of the combat, uh, for this one hour combat, they, it was a war, it was just crazy. Everyone just tweeting, it's crazy, uh, to just make their realms fall. And I think that we've managed to, to have that uh, claim of the campaign, that this perception is reality, and enable the audience to, to to live it and to, to make it happen. And the way we did this, and this is how uh, Conductor got integrated into this, is that uh, our motto is to bring stories to life. So that's what our company is trying to do. Uh, so with Conductor, this time what we were working, our software uh, was working as, um, as a backend. Uh, so that um, interface that you saw, uh, is dragging all the information from our database, the attributes, the health points, uh, the each realm uh, defense points, and, and so on, and all the profile uh, data, inventory uh, badges. Everything uh, was taken from that interface from our database. And that database would collect all, the, would just monitor our uh, conductor would monitor what's going on, on on the battlefield and whatever interaction with experience would be, uh, so it could uh, it could be transformed into a game experience. So conductor, uh, this software, uh, it's a multi-platform interactive storytelling tool. So we also see it as a cust uh, customer engagement platform that it's living in the cloud, as is uh, um, all the information is, uh, of every single interaction in every single platform, on Facebook, on Twitter, it was stored in the cloud. 
and it, all the experience was orchestrated from conductor. So if you just uh, posted something on a picture on Facebook uh, uh, on Game of Thrones, we will know that you have posted a picture and then we will give you a, um, a batch of uh, the painter batch and then we will give you the batch and pa pa place it on the website. So this way we're just orchestrating uh, an experience that is happening in different platforms at the same time so every, all the data is held uh, in the same place. And the idea is that it can gamify uh, loyalty schemes. So coming back to the, to the content marketing, the idea is that we are not only creating content that people will enjoy, we'll, we can just gamify the experience and we can just create not only customers, but fans that want to interact with the content that you're creating. So the way it works is that Conductor allows to create interactivity without coding. So you would have uh, different, uh, this Game of Thrones experience is a very big one that had Facebook responses, uh, we had uh, wars on Twitter, uh, we had uh, these uh, badges, but er these little uh, uh, pieces are like Lego pieces that can be built within Conductor, and you just can create a little SMS voting thing. So it's little pieces that you can put together to create different experiences. The way it would work is the, the experience designer, that would be the creators, uh, will just work with, our, uh, with Conductor in this gaming and interactive story engine and we, it will have a content management system, um, event monitoring, uh, we will create metrics, we have an activity feed, so we know what's going on in each, at each moment, we have the audience database, uh, in which we can get to know what each audience is experiencing. But all this is invisible to the audience, because all these players, all the participants, the only thing that they will see is the thing that they are used to, to see, Facebook, email, Twitter, they will not know that Conductor is really orchestrating all this. And the powerful thing about this is how we can segment the audience. Depending on how the audience uh, interacts with experience, uh, you can start to segment them in groups. Like this, person's, this person interacted with Locke at the beginning, this person uh, posted a picture, this person has conducted more than 10 times with this character. So we get to know a little bit how each person is interacting with experience so we can create uh, special content uh, for different levels of engagement or for different types of audiences and create a personalized experience depending on which uh, person is interacting with, with it. And also attributes, we can create these attributes in this Game of Thrones thing. It was health, stamina, uh, defense points, but it could be whatever. It's just storing data of these audience records, like how many books they have bought in Amazon, uh, how many clues they have solved, uh, puzzles uh, resolved. So it's data that we can collect to create, again, a personalized experience. So finally, to just sum up what Conductor would be, it's just a customer relationship management system uh, blended with content management system uh, and, um, above all, a storytelling and ga uh, gaming engine. Everything blended together, that would be the software uh, that we've developed. And just to finish, I would like to end with, uh, with some thoughts that I would like you to, to bear in mind. Uh, about content marketing. That would be if, if life, um, the time in our life uh, can be represented like a stream of water, you see here, a waterfall. You may, you may see that it's something that looks like a stream, something continues, life can just go on like this. But what we want to think about is just we like to focus in moments, these little drops that make all this waterfall that composes the whole uh, river stream. So these moments are the moments that are worth living in our lives. And that's exactly what we want to create when we create content for our fans. So through transmedia storytelling, uh, we like to take the audience through an emotional journey um, beyond the movie, beyond the TV show, beyond whatever, uh, and taking the audience from moment to moment, so you create an experience which is worth living 
and it's worth remembering. Uh, we are having a conference uh, on the 16th of this month. It's a fantastic excuse to visit London. Uh, so if you want to come, you're so welcome. And if not, thank you very much.